Okay guys, well today what we're doing is we're going to try to bring some new life into those old 19.2 Craftsman battery packs. Now a lot of us have these tools. We've had good luck with them. We want to keep them. And so, you know, we want to find a way to get the batteries working properly again so we can keep on using these tools. You know, none of us want to reinvest in something we don't really need. So that's what we're going to do today. So, very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to take the old NICAD battery out of this, and we're going to be replacing it with a lithium polymer battery. Now, these are typically used in things like uh, radio-controlled airplanes or drones, or they have a lot of power. Um, they they uh, pack a lot of power in a small space. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be putting this inside of our old pack and I'll show you how we do that. First thing we've got to be able to do is get these apart. Pretty simple. Just got uh, five screws here. They are a Torx T10 and they have the little center point in the middle which is a security type screw so you're going to need to make sure you get the Torx bits that have the little hole right in the middle, the Torx security bits, and a T10. So I'm going to take those out, and I'm going to fast forward through this frame so I don't hold you guys up. I never want to waste your guys' time with, with anything silly that's unnecessary. So we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, as you can see, we've got the screws all loosened up ready to come out and just set them here off to the side of the bench now we can get our battery pack open and you can see the top just comes right off and what you're left with is your NICAD cells that are in the battery pack just got to give them a little wiggle and they'll come right out of there okay so now that we've got the battery pack the cells out of the outer casing what we need to do is keep this top piece this is the part, piece that's going to go into your 19.2 tools so we have to retain that we're going to put that back into the battery casing so what we've got to do is be able to get this cell loose from this top here so the first thing I'm going to do is just Cut away all this superfluous stuff so that I can get in here. Cut away the bottom connection on the cell. And then all these wires. We're just going to set that battery pack out of our way. So here's what we're left with. This is one, just one single NICAD cell. And if you can see closely, there's two little spot welds inside there holding this positive terminal to the top of that cell we've got to get those loose so that we can get that pulled down out of there so that we can reuse this top piece so what i've always found works pretty good for that is just take a little drill bit and drill those out it's just a tin so it, it drills pretty easy now you try not to go too far i don't usually go all the way through i usually just kind of flex a little bit and break off the last little piece because otherwise you're going to drill into the NICAD cell and you might get some uh, acid or some acid paste or something out of there. So I'm just going to take a drill and just drill those out. And the nice thing is they're already, they're already dimpled for you, so that helps you get the bit started right there where you need it. got our top connector piece away from that last cell we'll just set that cell off to the side uh, so like I said we need uh, the front connection for the positive we need the rear connection here for the negative 
Everything else is just basically superfluous, so we're just going to cut that stuff off. All right. So now what I'm left with is a, a nice leg here to solder to for the negative and a little leg that comes down here that you could solder to. Um, I like to use this actual heavier terminal up here, but you could use either one. Either one is going to be heavy enough to uh, solder to. Now that we've removed that heat shrink, uh, what we're gonna do is we need to get rid of this existing connection you could desolder it. Uh, as you can see, there's plenty of material left here. So we're just actually going to snip it off right here and just re-solder a little bit, a little bit higher up the tab there, just to make it a little more simplistic. And that gives us plenty of room. We're going to solder on the back side of that. That gives us plenty of room to solder to. What, I, what we're going to do now is we're going to solder our negative wires, our negative wire to the inside of that terminal, back terminal, and then our positive wire to the inside of this front terminal. And we'll fast forward to the next step. Okay, guys, so you can see what I have here now. I've got the top connector piece soldered. I've got uh, the black onto the flat back part and the red on the curved front part of the connector. And what we're going to do, that needs to go back up into the battery pack so that our connections are through the battery pack. See right now you have no way to connect it and we need to get it back in there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use some two-part epoxy. What I typically do is just sand the outer outer part of this a little bit and sand in, inside up here a little bit so that the epoxy holds good. And uh, just gonna clean it up. And when we mix the epoxy and add it to this connector, we wanna be really certain that we don't get any epoxy on these connections, you know. What I do is I just put a little bit on the sides of this and a little bit in here, very little and I make sure that I feed this straight in, that I don't kind of move it all around and, and get the connectors on it on the sides of the walls or anything where it might pick up some epoxy. So I'm going to get that glued in. Um, so just follow the instructions on your epoxy. Okay, so we're going to get that done and we'll come back to the next step. Okay, guys, so the next step is we've got to make some little cuts in the back of our battery pack because we've got to have places for our wires to come out. So let me show you one of the ones I've been using for quite a while. So what you've got here is your wire coming out from your battery pack. You've got the uh, cell balancing cord coming out. That's how you're going to charge the battery. You know, both of these have to be connected to your charger. Your charger balances each cell as it charges. That way it's charging them all evenly. Uh, you've got to have that. And then this other connection is the... This is going to be the lead going to what we just soldered on the top of the battery. So this positive and negative are what directly lead up here to your positive and your negative on top of your battery pack. So you'll disconnect that. You'll plug this and this into your charger. This is the type of charger I use. I've had really good luck with this. So you'll need a, a specific charging cord for your battery type. This is a XT60 battery connection, which is probably what the vast majority of them are that you see on the lithium polymer batteries. And then of course, this is your cell balancing connection. So this one's set up for all the different size cell batteries from uh, two to six cells. So you'll need some sort of lithium polymer charger. These will never be able to be charged back up on your standard Craftsman 
charger anymore. Uh, these have got to be, these types of batteries have got to be charged, like I say, very specifically and carefully uh, using a balancing charger. So that's an important point to remember. So the next step is we've got to get those grooves cut in the back of this so that we can have a place for our wires to come out. Um, just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and show you one I've already got. So this is the same bottom. And I've just made three really rough looking grooves in the back here uh, using a Dremel tool. You could probably use a saw or saw on a file or something and do them too, but Dremel tool knocks it out pretty quick. So what I've done is I've already kind of st I've stuck a little piece of foam in here um, just to kind of help space and cushion the battery a little bit. So now we can, now that we've got the grooves cut in the back of the battery, we can go ahead and take our lithium polymer battery and set it in here. Our discharge cable is going to come out there. Our balancing cable is going to come out there. And the little slot that's left is where our cable will come out on the top of the battery pack. So here's this battery pack that I've already got made up. You can see that I've already got the connection glued in there. All I've done is go ahead and solder. You've got to have the opposite side of your XT60 connector. You can buy these pretty much everywhere online. It'll just be the opposite side of your XT60 connector, connector that will fit into your battery pack. So you'll have to buy a pack of those. So basically what I do after I set the battery in here, I just take some foam and I just try to just try to cushion the battery and, and space it out so it's not flopping in there. So just this is just some old foam I think I had from a window air conditioner or something. Anything that's any kind of foam will work, just something to kind of space it out. And so that's it for the bottom part. Now all we need to do is put our top of our battery back on. Now with this, uh, it might be a little tedious. You might have to play with it a little bit and get your wires routed so 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 they so they fit into the pack pack housing correctly. This one's already kind of been manipulated where I've had it together before. In fact, I think on yeah on this one I've actually taken the Dremel and made a little bit of a groove there and there to, to give me a little more clearance. So this will probably still resist me a little bit here. Let me see if I can put this back together. It's actually not too bad. And that's it. We'll put our screws back in. And I won't bore you with that. And like I said, the finishing uh, touch will be to, you know, using your two cables from your battery, charge this up. Um, once you're done charging it, you would then disconnect your charger, reconnect the top of your battery pack to your battery. And as far as the chart, the uh, cell balancing cable, I, I just let it hang. Um, I did buy some vinyl caps that I was putting on them for a while to keep them clean, but I find it really isn't an issue. I mean, you can just take some canned air or something and blow them off when you go to charge them or something if, if you have any issues. Um, but you probably can, you know, find some vinyl caps and things you could put over these if you want. So again, this is, this one here is the final product. It's all put together. This works really well. Like I say, I, I find that the ampacity of these is every bit as good, if not better, than like a comparable two amp hour Craftsman lithium battery. They just provide a lot of power. The five cell LiPo batteries is what you will need. So five cell LiPo is the nominal voltage of 18.5 volts. And I'm sure people are saying, well, these are 19.2 volt tools, uh, but there's a wide range of voltages these tools will work at. 
just to kind of give you an example, when you have these original NICAD batteries that come with these, when they're close to dead, I've seen 17, 18 volts if they're really run down. And then I've seen them as high as 23, 22 volts, something like that when they come fresh off the charger. So when these LiPos, when these five cell LiPo batteries are fully charged, they charge up to 21 volts, which is 4.2 volts per cell. And I find that to be perfect. And the nice thing about lithium is it, it stays at that nice high level of voltage for a long time. You don't see that linear drop off of voltage like you do with a, a NICAD battery. It's also a slight inconvenience too, because as a lot of you know, with lithium batteries, uh, you'll notice that when the battery runs out, it just shuts off. You don't have that linear, linear tapering of the voltage where you see it slowly start to, to fade. You do a little bit, but not nearly to the extent that you do with NICAD. Depending on your battery, this one's different than the one I just put in. So you might have to um, put your notches in the back of your battery pack a little differently. So you'll just want to notch those out based on the brand battery that you buy. These are, cables are pretty flexible, so um, typically you can move them around however you need. I find that I stick with about the 1.5 amp hour batteries, uh, or 1550 milliamp hours, however you'd like to say it. Um, they fit very well in these old NICAD housings. If you were to try to use one of the red lithium battery packs, that are for craftsmen. I've never tried that. I'm not sure how much, if it'd be any easier or, or more difficult. I feel like the two amp hours would be too thin to put one of these in. So, all right, guys, that's it. I appreciate it. If you have any comments or ways to improve this or uh, any questions, just post them in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe for my future videos. Thank you so much.